Medium chain triglycerides or MCT oil is an extremely powerful thing. But what we have to be careful not to do is just become a victim to all of the marketing that's out there surrounding MCTs. Now, I'll be the first person to say MCTs are amazing and the way they're digested in the body is very, very interesting and they're very powerful in the body. But I just wanna make sure that you have a solid education so you truly know what's happening when you consume MCT oil or coconut oil for that matter. And as always, if you haven't already, make sure you turn on notifications for my videos so you can see whenever I post up a live broadcast or a new coaching video. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can get three videos per week on your favorite topics. Let's get right into the science. So to understand how a medium chain triglyceride works in the body, we first have to understand what a triglyceride is and we have to understand what a fatty acid structure is. So when we look at dietary fats in the first place, all we have are different carbon atom chains. You see, we end up having these things that are called short chain fatty acids, long chain triglycerides or long chain fatty acids, and of course, the topic of interest today, medium chain triglycerides. Well, all that they are, are different carbon atoms that are linked together. For example, a short chain fatty acid is anywhere from two to six carbon atoms that are linked together. A long chain triglyceride or a long chain fatty acid, which is predominantly the fats that we consume, especially in the American diet, but almost all the fats that are not MCTs or LCTs, those are anywhere from 12 to 22 carbon atoms that are linked together. Then of course we have MCTs, MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides, just like the name implies, medium chain, it's a medium length chain of six to 10 carbon atoms. That's what makes it an MCT. So now we have to look at the word triglyceride for a second, because I think a lot of people get confused with triglycerides because they look at their blood work and they think that triglycerides are this, this crazy newfangled thing that only the doctors are looking at. Triglyceride is really just a technical term for fat. Okay, that's all we really have to be paying attention to. And there's ultimately two things that triglycerides can do in the body. They can either go into the cell and be used for energy and actually metabolize through aerobic metabolism, or they can get stored as adipose tissue or body fat. Really only the two things that these triglycerides can do. But what we do have to remember is that no matter what, whether it's a short chain triglyceride, a long chain triglyceride, or a medium chain triglyceride, all triglycerides are three fatty acids bound to a glycerol backbone. Try glyceride, put it together, that's all it is. Three fatty acids and a glycerol molecule. So now let's take a look at MCTs, now that you have a basic understanding of this and everything's gonna make sense. Now there's some unique properties when it comes down to MCTs in the first place. The first one is gonna be the fact that it's significantly lower calories. 10% lower calories to be exact when it comes down to comparing to other fats. Most fats are nine and nine and a half calories per gram, whereas MCTs are only eight. And the reason is, is because the shorter chain makes them digested quite a bit easier and they're converted into energy, which ends up having a quotient for us when it comes down to calculating calories. Because they are a shorter chain, they're absorbed significantly faster. Then we have to look at how they're easily converted. And now I'm gonna get a little bit scientific on you, but it's gonna make a lot of sense because I drew a nice little picture for you. Right here, we have what is called the mitochondria. Inside that mitochondria is where we create ATP. We create adenosine trisphosphate, which is what's giving you energy when you're working out, what's giving you energy when you're not working out and just talking. I'm using ATP right now to move my lips and to actually speak. So every time we have energy, we have ATP, and it happens in the mitochondria. Well, here's the cool thing. MCT oils, MCTs, because they are such short chains, they can go right into the mitochondria and create ATP. They can create energy immediately. Whereas a long chain triglyceride or a normal fat that we're consuming has to go through a whole separate pathway and it gets stopped. It gets stopped at this gate right here where there's a stop sign and it needs carnitine in order to get in. You hear people talking about using carnitine as a fat burner to help with fat burning it's because carnitine is going to help get these long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria to create energy better. Well, why not cut out the middleman and go straight to the MCTs that are gonna not have to use carnitine? So therefore, more acetyl coenzyme A is created, which equals more ketones, which equals more energy. Long story short, MCTs create energy faster. So now I wanna step into a slightly more scientific breakdown of how MCTs are digested versus long chain fatty acids digested. Because we actually did this a little bit backwards. I explained how the energy is created first, and now I wanna go back and explain how they're actually physically digested in the body. So now let's look at the digestion of a long chain triglyceride or a long chain fatty acid. Okay, when you consume a long chain triglyceride, a regular fat, not an MCT, 
you end up having this process where the fatty acids are separated by an enzyme known as lipase. What this lipase does is it takes the fatty acids off of that glycerol molecule, okay? It takes that triglyceride, it breaks apart the glycerol, and leaves you with fatty acids. These fatty acids go through a different enzymatic function and ultimately form something that's known as a micelle. And what this micelle does is it can cross through the intestinal tract and cross through what's called the enterocyte, and it gets into the lymphatic system. Once it's in the lymphatic system, it reattaches to a glycerol, okay? So to make sure that you're tracking and following here, it starts as a triglyceride, it's broken down into a micelle, no longer a triglyceride. Then once it's back in your bloodstream and your lymphatic system, it turns into a triglyceride again because glycerol is reattached. This whole process involves the liver, it involves bile salts, and it's a very complex process. To break down fats is not easy. That's why they say they're harder to digest, quite literally. Now let's look at the MCTs and how those are digested. They get preferential absorption, okay? They get the absolute first-class treatment when it comes to this. Because of their shorter length, they don't need a micelle. They don't need to get converted into a micelle. But they're transported directly from what's called the portal vein into the liver, where they get preferential oxidation. So again, they get the VIP pass all the time. These MCTs, because they're shorter and easier to break down, go straight to the liver where they're oxidized for fuel. Then what happens inside the liver is actually really cool, because here's where it gets interesting. The liver now catabolizes these MCTs into shorter carbon chains. Remember how I mentioned the shorter the carbon chain, the easier to digest? So the liver breaks it down into C2 fragments. C2 meaning two chains, okay, just two atoms, two carbon atoms, so it's a really small chain. And what it does is it turns them into acetyl coenzyme A esters. A C2 fragment would be an acetyl coenzyme A ester. Now, I know I'm getting a little bit complex, but acetyl coenzyme A esters are basically the building blocks for energy in the mitochondria. Once we have the acetyl coenzyme A esters that are formed from the fat, which again, mind you, has been completely streamlined, then it gets metabolized by acetyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. That's what breaks down the acetyl coenzyme A into acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate. What the heck is Thomas talking about? All of this means we don't have the middleman. We're going straight to the liver. We're getting converted into literally energy, and it's metabolized into ketone bodies that therefore give us even more energy because we know that ketone bodies are extremely valuable when it comes to creating energy. All of this means at the end of the day that MCTs are efficiently burned and don't get stored as body fat. That's the whole point. A very small percentage, like less than half percent of the calories that are consumed from MCTs are ever stored as fat. They're almost always exclusively burned. So when you're on a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet and you're not utilizing glucose metabolism, you want to get those MCTs in because your body will use them and it goes into straight up energy. So as always, if you like these kinds of videos and you like the whiteboard talk, let me know. Let me know in the comment section below and I'll be sure to do more of these videos because I think they're a little bit more interactive and they give me a chance to explain more in-depth things without losing the audience. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video and make sure you comment below. See you soon.